Welcome back to my YouTube channel and today I'm going to show you how to replace disc brakes based on any car but the example that I have is a 2015 Chevy Sonic RS so I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks that are going to help you do it fast efficiently and get it done safely and I'm going to show you little things like how to measure the thickness of your rotor to know if it's already been turned or if you still have enough material left to have it turned or if you got it turned and you want to still make sure that the person did it correctly and it's still the correct thickness that you're, you go safely down the road. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so for this Chevy Sonic, first thing you're going to do is you're going to need a 19 millimeter to break off the lug nuts, obviously. Then you're going to need to take off, you want to take off the caliper bolts first. So a 10 millimeter does that. That's simple. A 18 millimeter takes off. Oh no no, this takes off the caliper slide bolts, the ones uh right here, right on the back side. The caliper bolt bracket, that's taken off by an 18 millimeter. Then the reason you see a jack stand here is you're gonna want one under the car, but I use one to hold up this caliper over here in the corner back there. That way the caliper, li the line to the brake caliper isn't going to get all messed up because you don't want to, you don't want to hurt, you don't want to mess up that. So second, the rotor, if it's stuck on, you have two options. One, you can use a mallet, rubber mallet, but because I didn't have to reuse the rotor and this wasn't taking it off, I stepped up to the sledgehammer and uh, gave it a few taps and it came right off. So. That's why you want this. That's so you can clean up the hub. That way the disc goes back onto a flat, clean surface with no rust in between it. You can put anti-seize or something behind it. I highly recommend doing something like that. That way the rudder comes off a lot easier next time. I have my uh, measuring tool to measure the thickness of the rudders back there. You can buy that at any parts store for like basically 13 bucks. You see on my rudder and my pad. Yeah, I you brake clean because a lot of rotors come with a coating. This one's already painted, so it, it doesn't have anything on it. Um, I already checked, and if needs be, I'll clean it again. So you don't have to worry about that in the comment section. Um, basically, have an old brake pad somewhere. That way, either your C clamp or if you have what I have, an actual piston caliper thing to push the caliper back in. That's crucial to have. And then I have steel wool over here. That might seem weird, but when you're back there, just clean off the rudder a little bit. Get, um, I mean, clean off the caliper. So basically, I went in there and I cleaned off all the gunk and everything that gets in there. Because basically, not too often when are you going to be able to access this and clean it, unless you're, you know, you're really OCD like I am. So, uh, basically all that. So everything you see here is what you basically need to do. It nothing else really to it few simple hand tools, no power tools, nothing crazy, a jack, two jack stands I recommend, and you're good to go. So I'm going to do the rear back here, and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, let's get started. So basically, now break all the lugs off, break them loose, and then start jacking up the car. Yep, they're all loose. Simple as that. Almost ready to start doing the brakes. So now that we got the wheels off, basically I'm going to remove the caliper pin bolts. Actually, what I'll do on this one, actually I do caliper pin bolts first, then the caliper bracket bolts. Uh, it's very, very, very simple. So I'm going to do this off camera because uh, it's going to be a little hard to film at the same time. But yeah, caliper pin bolts first, then do the bracket bolts. And on the Sonic, the bracket bolts are an 18 millimeter, and the caliper pin uh, pin bolts are a 10. Also, I'm doing the rear, so make sure your parking brake is off, and that your other wheel is chalked so the car doesn't move. Put a block of wood or something behind it for safety. So yeah, let's get started. So I got my. 10 millimeter, I'm going to slide it over the caliper pin bolt, obviously make sure that I'm loosening the bolts first, because 
That'd be a problem. Tightening instead of loosening is never a good thing. Uh, okay. That was not that bad. And then get the bottom one. Wow. The back is a little not as accessible as the front. Uh, okay, got those loose. Um basically take those out. Actually, um yeah, both of them. If you're just doing the pads, you can leave the top one in and actually just basically fold the caliper. I forgot that uh, parking brake was set. Um, dang. Uh, funny part is the, cal uh, the parking brake's now off, so that would be a pain in the butt, but Oh, actually, you know what? Here, I can slide it out this way. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's true. Don't forget that this has the parking brake inside of it. So, the rear brake caliper is also the parking brake. So, don't forget that. Like I just did. I turned it off, but you really want to find a... There we go. That's actually perfect. Uh, you can see that. Um, there's no tension on here. Actually, it's just sitting up. Honestly, this is fine. Uh, because it's just sitting right there. Because I totally forgot that this line down here to it is actually part of the parking brake system. And this is your brake line. So it's perfectly fine because this is under any tension. So, yeah, let's not worry too much about that. And next, let's just start taking apart the... An 18 millimeter is what takes off the bracket caliper bolt. And these things are a pain in the bullet tucks. You know what's funny? It's smaller for the back. So like I said earlier, this is actually still a 30 Torx bit that takes this uh, screw out for the rotor. I'm going to leave it kind of in place because as you can tell this rotor is not going to come off. The good thing I'm replacing the rotor. so. Few taps and it came off. I left the screw in there so it didn't fall off completely. But uh, yeah, that's how you can get a stuck rotor off. I'm gonna reuse, reuse that screw, but yeah, now clean everything up. Um, what got stuck there is this rust on this hub. So just lightly see, uh, take that the scraper I have. So take the scraper, you know, work your way around it. You know, don't get the backing plate. But yeah, just work and clean all that rust up, get it all clean. Make sure your mating surface is flat and there's not a lip, and you'll be good to go. I know this isn't that much rust, uh, obviously. Um, I'm from Northern Virginia area, so we've got a lot of salt and sand. And as you can tell, you can see the salt up here and all that. But yeah, this is not as bad as somewhere like New York or anything like that up, up north, the real north. So, uh, let me go get the new rotor and everything and put that on. Okay, right, so now as you can tell, I got the caliper bracket back on. I got the pins lubed up and everything, so they're ready to go. So my next thing is basically I'm going to tighten down the bracket caliper bolt um, that's what I want to do first so very simple just tighten them down start them up by hand and then tighten them down with this and then go to the correct foot pounds by your make and model whatever it requires
I just want to get them tightened down, so I haven't torqued them yet. So I'm not going to leave them like this. Just want to get them in. Um, so there they are. I got the bracket all clean. Now what I want to show you is how to compress the caliper. So I got my tool. Got this. So basically, you're going to slide. However you can do this. This could be a weird way to do, try and do this on this one. But basically, I'm going to back this up too. Because you're going to want to fit... Okay, let's see. Actually, okay, so basically, you want to back this up to the very, very, very beginning. Obviously. Um, slide the caliper... Slide your old brake pad onto the caliper, onto the piston basically. Get it set up. So now I'm going to be tightening it down. I have it in backwards, it doesn't really matter, it works both ways. So It's just a simple one piston caliper. So basically now that I have that, and as you can tell, just work the caliper, work the piston back in. And that's in. I did not really use the rear brakes yet in 30,000 miles. Basically, now just slide this over top of the pads. together pads in pads basically just slide in the caliper you basically put a brake pad down put your c-clamp and compress that piston back in it's very much common sense put everything put those caliper pins back in basically it reassembles like you took it apart so not too bad not too hard so basically that's how you do it um just it's a reversal of taking everything off and just putting it back on make sure you grease the pins make sure when you get back into the car you pump the brakes so they're there um, check your brake fluid level um, you can, this would be a great time to flush the brakes um, put new brake fluid in stuff like that uh, watch the um, check to see at the beginning where your brake fluid level was at because if it was really high then you might want to take a, ta uh, a turkey baster and take some of it out so it doesn't uh, overflow and go over, all over your engine bay. Uh, Jiffy Lube likes to top it off. That's why I don't like topping off your brake fluid. Usually when you go to change the pads and you push the piston back in, the brake fluid just, the, that's where the brake fluid's going. It, it, the brake system is a closed system, so the fluid's not like disappearing, it's just going out with the piston. So once the piston is pushed back in, your brake fluid, your brake fluid goes back in. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like what you see on the channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, guys. Thanks again. Bye.